Okay, so in the last video, we got our node file, JavaScript, communicating with our MySQL database, albeit very, very simple communication. We're not actually interacting with tables, but this is SQL code that we're running. So the next step, of course, is getting it to interact with tables. So we're going to, in this video, we're going to create uh, our table. We're going to define our schema, create our table in MySQL separate from uh, JavaScript, and then we're going to try and query it from here. So basically we're going to go into MySQL, create our table, let's add two or three users, and then we're going to see if we can fetch them from Node. But before we get there, one thing I want to address very briefly is when we're looking at this code, you know, this connection.query, function, error, results, fields, or this code up here, var connection equals blah, 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 you might be wondering, how did you know what code to type? Where did I find this? It's not in the MySQL documentation. This is not an official MySQL uh, sanctioned library. Basically, the way that it works is that uh, random developers, who, teams of developers, solo developers, go and create these libraries that connect MySQL to other languages. Um, some of them are more supported than others. Like I said, some of them are just one person, but they usually have their own documentation. So the documentation for this is on GitHub. It's uh, github.com slash mysqljs slash mysql. There goes my fridge again. Oh, very active today. Uh, but if we scroll down, you can see, well, there's a lot of stuff to take a look at, but it basically talks about installing it, talks about uh, setting up your connection. It talks then, if you keep going down, about once you've established a connection, what can you do? Well, here's a very simple query. We saw something very similar, although this is just uh, selecting one. We did something a little more complicated, but if we keep going, eventually you'll see we get to things about uh, querying, which is where we're going just in a little bit. Uh, but basically, I want to show you there is a source of documentation. So here we talk about some queries, how it works. We'll come, we'll come back to this in a bit, but I'm not just pulling this stuff from nowhere. And I certainly don't have it memorized. I'm not just, you know, I don't just know how it works. I'd say the approach is more, okay, I know what I need to build. I'm going to be building it with Ruby. Now let me find the Ruby MySQL driver or a gem, which is what they're called instead of packages in Ruby. Let me find a MySQL gem. Is there a connector? And then you find it. And then you look through the documentation and you figure out how it works. Okay. How do I connect first? That's the first thing you need to do. And there's not one syntax. It varies from language to language. Somebody made a decision. So if we go back to our slides here, you know, somebody made the decision to call this method query, which, I mean, it makes sense to call it query, um, but it could have also have been called make query or perform query. Or when we're creating the connection, mysql.create connection, I don't know, someone could have called this, this could be database name instead of database. but somebody's making those calls um, and I'm not disagreeing with you know the way this is named in any way but I'm saying you have to play by the rules of whoever defined this just like when we're working with MySQL we have to use the MySQL syntax there's a, a specific syntax we have to learn same thing for using these libraries so it's not something that comes standard with JavaScript or with Node it's something we had to plug in ourselves and that means we need to go do the work to figure out how to use it okay so next up, we're going to create our schema. And it's pretty simple. All that we need are two fields. So we'll run create table users. We'll do email and a pretty standard length uh, is 255. So not that an email is that long, but for fields in general, text fields, people will do varchar 255. And we'll make it a primary key. Why do we want to do that? Basically, we don't want someone to be able to sign up twice with the same email address. Also, it gives us a couple more options for exercises, so it's a good thing to do, and it's good practice. Um, this is probably the first time we've seen primary key without auto increment. Then we've also got created at, and that's going to be a timestamp. It could be a date time, but remember back to that video I did about the difference. Timestamp is uh, smaller. It takes up less space in memory, and it works just as well, except for really far away dates in the past and in the future. 1970 up until 2038, I think it is, is the current range. We're not going to worry about that because we're dealing with current dates. You know, we're creating a mailing list app or a wait list app. People are signing up now. So we don't have, you know, nobody's entering a date from 1650 or something. 
then we're setting the default value to be now so that when someone signs up, it will automatically be filled in as the current time. But don't forget when we're working with Faker, we are going to insert like 500 users into this table and we are going to provide a created at time so that we don't get you know 500 uh, users with the exact same time. So we want this default value to be there, but we'll also be able to override it manually if we want to. Okay, so let's hop over to Cloud9. And the first thing I'm going to do, close this down, is just make a new file. I'm just gonna call it schema.sql. And the only reason I'm doing that uh, is just to have a record of this. You, you could just open up MySQL and start typing create table. But I'm gonna do it in here, create table users. Okay, so we wanted email, and then we wanted created at. And email is varchar255, primary key. And created at is timestamp. It would work just fine if you left it as a date time. Uh, and we want default to be now, or we could also say current timestamp. Okay, just like that. And we'll save. We'll hop down to our terminal down here. I'm in the MySQL uh, CLI, and I'm just gonna select database right now and see what we're working with. Good, we're in the join us database. So we made a new empty database. If we look at you know show tables, there's nothing here. That's good. So we're going to create this. You can either copy it and paste it in, or you can run the file, which I'll do just because it's been a while. Source schema.sql. Okay, now let's see if it worked. Show tables this time. Now we have a user's table and we can describe it. Perfect. 